test. Okay, so a regular stress test is when you go on a treadmill with electrodes and the body is going through its paces and as the demands on the heart goes up, if there's a blockage, there'll be changes on the EKG. We call that ischemic changes when the part of the uh, waveform, the ST part, starts to get depressed. Anyway, the technical part uh, is not important. The bottom line is, this is what's important. Your stress test is only positive or finding of abnormality when you have greater than 90% blockage. In other words, you'll pass a stress test if you have 70% blockage. You'll pass a stress test if you have 80% blockage. You'll pass your stress test if you have a 85% blockage. In other words, you have to have a critical blockage to see the changes on an EKG. That's a regular stress test. The difference between a regular stress test and a nuclear stress test is that before they embark on the stress, they inject nuclear material, which when it travels around your body, will go through the coronary arteries and go into the heart muscle area. Okay, now you are on the treadmill going through your paces. You're stressing the heart, the heart is demanding more blood flow. The blood starts to go through and then images are taken as you're going through your paces with a certain protocol called the Bruce protocol. If you had a blockage, that nuclear material wouldn't go through the blockage adequately, so you'd see what is what we call a defect. In other words, an area where the, the, the material is not visible on the special x-ray because of a blockage. Now, if you see that, that's far more specific than your regular stress test without the dye. And it'll pick up any amount of blockage, a 30% blockage, a 40% blockage, a 50% blockage. But clearly, you know, we do a nuclear stress test because we're looking for a critical blockage that we might otherwise miss with a regular stress test. And uh, what we say is that after a nuclear stress test, if it's negative, there's a 99% certainty that within that 12 months preceding that test, you're unlikely to have a cardiac event. That's a fancy word for saying a heart attack or some kind of cardiac problem. So that's a good reassurance. And we only order that because nuclear material is far more invasive than just a regular stress. We only order it when we suspect that there's a likelihood that there's something there. Because if you have a stress test and it's normal, but you still are worried about a heart, it wasn't a good enough test. So what's the point of wasting your time with a regular stress test when as a physician, if you really are concerned, you're gonna go for the gold standard, right? And, and one beyond that is an angiogram, but angiogram is truly invasive because you're going into a big artery typically through the groin, although those may change now, and, it, and a, an electrode goes, and a, a, a probes go from the groin through your arteries around to the heart, and then they inject dye into your coronary arteries. And with, with an angiogram, if they see a defect, the beauty of it is that they can actually go in and put a stent in there, unlike a nuclear stress test, which is just for diagnosis. A angiogram would be a gold standard, but we reserve that when we're truly suspecting a cardiac event, like you're in the emergency room and there is abnormal EKG changes associated with symptoms. That's enough to, for us to take you down to the cath lab and say that I'm not sure what's going on, but it's highly likely that there's a heart attack trying to happen or something like it. So let's go down and look at it. And if we see it, then we can actually put a stent in it. If we look at it and find nothing, then we can stop right there. So it all, it's all about the, the right test for the right patient at the right time. And that takes clinical judgment. You can't just rely on a blood test to tell you what's going on. You can't always rely on an EKG to tell you what's going on. You can't even rely on a regular stress test to tell you what's going on. It is nice to get the standard test like a nuclear stress test or an angiogram because you don't have to do much thinking. It's pretty obvious because there's such a sensitive testing, but those are invasive and um, you're gonna have too much risk if you just rely on that. That's why it's so important for a physician to get to know the patient. When a patient complains versus a non-complaining patient, the patient that knows their, uh, their, their, their overall well-being versus they don't know their well-being very well. In other words, the patients are good judges and sometimes they're not as good. And then frankly, as a physician, uh, you over the years you get experience in understanding what's being said, what's not being said, just the looks on their face. And so in particular, when someone says something like, you know, I get a little short of breath when I'm on the treadmill. Well, you get a little shortness of breath on the treadmill. But if they say, look, you know, I was rushing at the airport and I got short of breath, 
but I felt a little heaviness in my chest. My arms kind of felt strange. And then when I stopped it, it went away and it happened again. So you can say, well, you know, my clinical judgment is that it's probably nothing because you had a good examination a, uh, you know, a few months ago. You even had a, a, a stress echo a year ago. It was fine then. Um, but my clinical judgment tells me that a year has gone by, things can change. And those symptoms are too risky to just say it's nothing. You have to prove it's nothing and then say, you know, it's not your heart. We'll have to find other reasons for it. And so that's the difference between a stress test and a nuclear stress test.